Let's review the arming sword of Poker Armory. Hello there, Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam. And today I want to give you a very quick review on the Miles arming sword of Poker Armory. Because it's a very special design. So first up, what's an arming sword? Well, it's the standard one-handed sword that was used in medieval times up to the late Middle Ages. But of course, certain variants and swords uh, that resemble the blade shapes of arming swords still re um, remained up to the 17th century and maybe even later. Um, this is a typical medieval arming sword. Not really typical, to be honest, because the blade shape is quite different. What do I mean by that? Well, while the typical blade shape, shape of an arming sword is of course aimed towards having very thin cutting edges, this is basically an inverse arming sword in that sense because it has very broad edges and has a really, really deep fuller. So this uh, takes more uh, designing ideas from like, uh, like Freddy's or uh, other blunt swords having the mass of the blade concentrated towards the edge. And this has two main effects. Or well, let's say three. The first one is it keeps the overall mass of this blade fairly low. So this one is around 90 centimeters long and it weighs just 850 grams. So it's really, really light in the hand and it's really, really nimble. Almost too, too light for, for a real arming sword, to be honest. But more on that later. The second one is it is really durable because anything that uh, is parried with the edge now uh, the energy is dispersed over a larger area, over the white edge and therefore you are taking almost no edge to edge damage. So I got this blade, now it's one and a half years so I think I can give you a good long term review and it has suffered like no visible edge damage so I haven't grinded it down or anything and this is super smooth still after all of these fights that I did with the sword. Okay, so it's really makes it really durable blade and a really durable edge, but it also makes a really safe sword in the sense that if you're cutting, the energy that you're transferring into your opponent is dispersed over a wider edge, so over a larger area, and therefore this hits really softly, comparatively to some other swords with thinner edges. Okay. Uh, talking about safety, we also have to talk about flex. So this blade has a spatulated tip, so it's not folded around, but it's uh, a bit thicker and it's uh, fairly flat towards the top. And the flex actually isn't too great, so I can bend this, no problem. But then uh, this leaves a nice mark into the palm of my hand, so it's not really that comfortable. And uh, if you put it on a weight measure, well, then it comes down to, depending on how the angle of the, the thrust as you are doing, comes around at 15 kilograms or something like that. So it's actually a fairly stiff blade. So, but it can be easily fixed. So for example, like I said, the blade is also really light, but you can, and these are the standard measurements that you can find on the website of Poker Armory, but you can ask Simon or the team of Poker Armory at any time to make you some customizations. So what I would do in your case is make it maybe even a bit longer, a bit uh, thinner towards the edge, and that will basically solve the problem of its flex, making it way more flexible, and also adding a bit of weight, so I think around one kilogram would be still plenty of light for an arming sword. They can be uh, way heavier, so Origins could be way heavier, but this is like for, for a really nice and safe sword, I think that would be a great weight. There are also a lot of customizations that you can already pick on the website, like you can ch change the cross, you can change uh, the kind of grip, the guard and the pommel as well. And so there are lots of uh, options for customization. I'll just think um, that you need to watch the flex. Okay. Okay. Last up, uh, let's talk a bit about craftsmanship. Well, for once, like durability was superb in these one and a half years. Handling is also really great. Um, optics. Well, that's quite debatable because, like I said, this is not really like a real blade, <laughs> of course, but uh, that's kind of the point. I want to do my sport, historical fencing, historical martial arts with that blade, or even if you go for reenactment, 
then it's still good, good, great blade shape to use, right? Because we don't want to hit our partners. And from the outside, I think the, the optics are quite, quite nice. It's, it's fine, it has some good distal taper and everything. It's just, uh, if you get really close, you will see that the footer is, for example, not really centered. So there are some little uh, marks here and there from, from the forging and the cross guard as well. So it's not really like, uh, like super well polished, but it also doesn't cost a lot. So these are uh, coming in at around just above 200 euros in the European Union uh, already with the tax, I think. So I think these are really worth it. Okay, so let's get to the conclusion. I definitely can recommend the swords. It's one of my favorite swords and definitely one of my, uh, my favorite Armin sword that I own. Um, Durability-wise, it's the best I've ever known, so I would give it five out of five points. Uh, handling, it's almost too light, so um, I still give it five out of five points here, but I would probably, if I would get another one, I get the longer one that is a bit heavier and also a bit more flexible. Um, aesthetics, I think I would give it like three to four points, just because um, the blade design overall is really solid and the overall shape is nice, everything is good. Um, there are some, some minor issues uh, that, I would, that could be done better and I think one point has to be deducted at least for, uh, like for the blade design as it is not really historical. But then again, I wouldn't want an, a historical and sharp blade to fight my friends. So, uh, the last question, could you do Bolognese swordsmanship with this? Well, of course, I would probably just again get a bit of a longer blade uh, to do all these counter thrusting actions because as the length of the blade approaches the length of the arm, it gets kind of hard to do these like really direct counter thrusts. Okay, I can talk about this in another video if you would like to. So long, take care and bye.